Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Tomorrow starts Victober, and I finally got my Victober TBR set ready to announce uh, to you uh, in this video, which is coming out today. I'm really looking forward to Victober and getting into uh, reading more Victorian literature. I'm also, even though I've screwed it up, going to be participating in uh, Mel from Mel's Bookline Adventures Gone with the Book Readathon, in which you're supposed to read a classic uh, work of literature from uh, before 1950, published between 1900 and 1950. So I'm going to be talking about that TBR too, even though I, I already missed September because I misunderstood when it was taking place. Probably should learn to pay better attention, but Victober first, so let's talk about that. So um, let's see. The first challenge is Ange's, Ange's challenge. Ange from beyond the pages. Her challenge was to read a Victorian novel by a female author that was new to you. That would be uh, George Eliot, and I'm going to read Silas Marner. Now, if you saw my Victoria TBR from last year, you know this book was on the list, but I didn't get to it, and I really only read a couple of pages of it before uh, Victoria ran out. So I'm going to call George Eliot new to me, and this is a George Eliot I think I can handle this year. You know, some people are going for uh, Adam Bede, and I know Lukash is uh, reading Middlemarch, which, you know, I've heard everybody say how great it is. Uh, I just can't face that long of a book uh, in October. I'll have to probably read that at some time that's not uh, Victober. So the second challenge is from Kate, and Kate's challenge is to reread uh, a Victorian novel. So I'm going to reread Wuthering Heights. I think this is a really popular reread. I've seen, I've been watching a lot of people's Victober uh, videos, and a lot of people are rereading Wuthering Heights to fulfill that challenge, and so am I. Uh, so I'm going to take that on. I'm not sure, you know, if I'll do that later in the month or try to get it out of the way earlier in the month, but we should really form a club of people rereading Wuthering Heights this year. Let's see, Katie's challenge, Katie from uh, Books and Things. Oh, by the way, this was Kate Howe's challenge. Katie's challenge uh, from Books and Things was to read a Victorian novel that's less than 250 pages or more than 500 pages. And so I chose The Warden uh, by Anthony Trollope. Uh, this is, I think, the first novel in the Barchester uh, series, and I, I have uh, other books in that series. This will be my first Trollope um, that I'm reading. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. This may be the first book I read. And then the last challenge, uh, specifically assigned to one of the ladies hosting Victober, uh, is to reread is to read an underappreciated cl Victorian classic from the year in which your favorite Victorian classic was published. Well, that's pretty hard, and that's pretty complicated. And to be honest with you, I I am really underread in terms of Victorian literature. So. I don't really have uh, a book to fill that challenge other than I'm going to read Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson, which I think is an underrated Victorian book. When people talk about Stevenson in terms uh, of his work, most likely you'll see, you probably see Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, maybe um, Treasure Island, which I read last year, but this year I'm going to read uh, Kidnapped. Uh, so that, I'm going to call that underappreciated, even though it doesn't really come from a year in which my favorite Victorian uh, novel was purchased, or was purchased, was published. And then <clears throat> I'm going to attempt to read Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy and I are not friends. Last year I tried to read Thomas Hardy's poetry and I didn't like it. Uh, in, as an undergraduate in college, I tried to, I was assigned to read Jude the Obscure and I didn't like it. In high school, I was assigned to read Return of the Native, and I didn't like it. So everybody, everybody I've said, told this to says, well, maybe start with uh, The Mayor of Casterbridge or this book, Far From the Matting Crowd, that this is the best way to introduce yourself to Thomas Hardy. So that's what I'm doing this year. I'm giving Hardy yet another chance by reading this incredibly <laughs> cheaply published um, <laughs> paperback. I think this was the, the cheapest one I could find on an order. Anyway, it's got a cool picture on the front. But I'm going to give Thomas Hardy a chance. Uh, I'll probably have to build my confidence by getting through Trollope and um, George Eliot, but I, I promise myself I'm going to do this. And then lastly, um, just in case 
I get through all five of those books. I also wanted to read some nonfiction related to Queen Victoria. So this is Lucy Worsley's Queen Victoria, 24 Days That Changed Her Life. Nonfiction book uh, about important days and events in Queen Victoria's life, which you know, I think it was published last year, and I'm, I'm pretty interested in. I've heard good things about Lucy Worsley. I believe she's the author of the book uh, Jane at Home or Jane Austen at Home, um, which I know um, some booktubers uh, kind of like. So anyway, I'm going to try that. So there you go. That's my uh, Victober TBR, uh, George Eliot, um, Emily Bronte, Anthony Trollope, Robert Louis Stevenson, Oh, I hit the camera and Shutter Thomas Hardy, along with nonfiction by uh, Lucy Worsley about Queen Victoria. So, for Mel's um, Gone with the Book read along, I screwed up. I thought it started in October, but it started this month, and I've already missed uh, uh, the read along, the Gone with the Book read along for this month. So, uh, I'm just gonna, I guess, do. October and November, but in November, I've already pledged myself to read A Room uh, of One's Own uh, by Virginia Woolf. Um, you know, as I said earlier, there's a really great video about Claudia at Spencer's Library about how important this book is and how people should read it. She challenged people to read it, and I'm taking that challenge, and this will be my um, non-Victorian um, uh, book but it was published between 1900 and 1950, so it counts for that. I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna carry Mel's uh, read-along over into December, uh, because that's what I thought. I thought it went uh, October, November, December, but it really goes September, October, November. So I'm just gonna carry it over one more month. And to be honest with you, I can't remember if it's supposed to be female authors between 1900 and 1950. I hope not, because uh, next month, uh, I plan on reading Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell. Again, this book meets the qualification. It's a bit of a classic because the author uh, has written classic works of literature, um, and I've never haven't read it, but I've had it on my shelf for a long time. This seemed like a good reason to read it. And then in December, uh, Britta and I are going to buddy read uh, *The House of Mirth* by Edith Wharton. I'm ashamed to tell you, this would be my first Edith Wharton novel, uh, and I'm really looking forward. Uh, really looking forward to, to reading it. So there you go. That's my TBR, uh, one book for each month, including one month that's not actually part of Mel's Gone with the Book uh, read-along that uh, I'm going to be reading. So really looking forward to Victober. I've enjoyed watching all of your Victober videos. Uh, let me know what you think about my choices and my chances of getting through hmm, seven or eight books in the month of October. Anyway, in the comment section down below, and as always, thank you for watching.